By 2030, 3 billion people, or 40,000% of the population, will live in inadequate housing, if we do nothing. A habitat characterized by strong social exclusion of residents, great insecurity, and a lack of basic services. This is a global problem that is increasing both in the suburbs of the North and South. In response, two strategies are usually implemented. On the one hand, mass urbanization produced by public actors that attempt to meet the demand for housing and infrastructure for people with low incomes. On the other, the real estate development of private actors that meet the demand, insofar as it has the means. With, of course, all public-private approaches in between. But are these the only approaches to building social cohesion and the quality we seek for our cities? In addition to cities generated by supply, public or private, there is another type of city, produced by demand, by the people. We affirm that people can be involved in their city, that housing is a process, not a product, and that a city, built by its inhabitants, also builds social links and a local community. It is in line with the needs to the extent that the inhabitants themselves control the process. It is inclusive and sustainable when people work together with planning professionals and negotiate with public actors. Rather than build for the people, passive consumers of a prefabricated city, it is about building with the people to develop supportive policies. Thus, the social protection of habitat is an exciting response to the challenges of tomorrow's cities. The people are not the problem, but the solution. This city, produced by and for the people, is not a utopia. It is being built every day. For example, in Latin America, where housing cooperatives supported by mutual aid welcome more than 100,000 people on low incomes in Uruguay, a model that has been disseminated in 15 other countries on the continent. Or, for example, in Europe, where housing cooperatives are developing in all countries and represent over 20% of housing in cities like Zurich by building sustainable neighborhoods planned by the community. In Asia and Africa, groups of community savings enable the most disadvantaged inhabitants to build their city based on immediate needs. Based on solidarity, they then improve their homes and their streets and their neighborhoods. There are now more than 1 million people who have come together in Slum Dwellers International in 34 countries. And in 160 cities in Asia, community groups have organized themselves within the Asian Coalition for Housing Rights. In the United States, Canada, and England, this is the model of community land trusts, that is spreading in response to financial crises and the precarious housing situations they generate. In each country, these projects exist, but they are not sufficiently connected and they are not visible enough. The project of a global platform on the social production of habitat was created based on a meeting facilitated by Urbamond in 2014 in Geneva between Habitat International Coalition, Cooperative Housing International, Slum Dwellers International, Asian Coalition for Housing Rights, and Community Land Trusts. This project aims to strengthen links between local communities and to make visible their projects together to negotiate the ability of people to develop the city. Indeed, the social production of habitat cannot develop without political and professional support. To access land, to get funding, local communities must be able to count on the support of public actors. To plan and to build, they must negotiate partnerships with professionals. It is therefore crucial to put these projects at the heart of the debate. The platform is built well into two parts. First, a regional process to increase visibility and exchange, and then a digital social platform. The hub meetings highlight the most significant projects in each region to convince, by example, the supporting actors in order to exchange practices and inspire new projects. In each region, an annual call is initiated by inviting communities to document their initiatives. Two to five best projects are selected and presented publicly at high impact meetings organized by the Partner Network. The presentations are filmed and translated. The event allows for local trade practices. Each network partner organizes a hub meeting in a different country each year and sets its criteria according to the intended local impact. These regional selections are then submitted to the World Habitat Award. Some projects might be selected as finalists, thereby building international recognition. To strengthen exchanges between networks, a finalist from another region is invited to each meeting. The hub meetings are essential to build active links between communities and local advocacy. However, these exchanges are also limited in time and space and involve a small number of projects. We therefore propose to erase borders for building decentralized exchanges between groups of people. 
It is not just a project database that documents the initiatives and helps to build visibility and common information. It is also a social network that builds long-term exchange and solidarity relations between the different communities. It is ultimately a tool that facilitates the meetings hub and ensures its recognition. The digital and physical components are thus inseparable for the construction of the platform. In summary, this platform allows a peer-to-peer -peer exchange between habitat projects initiated by local communities in both the North and South. It strengthens the links between global networks. It is built upon a synergy base with the Right to the City platform. The Social Protection of Habitat platform focuses on the projects of the communities that are the most concrete manifestation of local and national policies that analyze the Right to the City platform. On the basis of solidarity between groups of people, it will be possible to eventually develop financial mechanisms among peers. Finally, to sustain the financing of the platform, the long-term involvement of stakeholders and public support will be essential. But you're probably wondering how to allow this platform to emerge. How can I support this initiative? If, in your priority region, you want to encourage the development of social protection of habitat, become the supporter of an annual hub. If you've always dreamed of a living database and updated projects with which you work, support the development of the digital social platform. If you think it's essential to us a way into international negotiations on the subject, you can participate in building a common campaign on the social protection of habitat for Habitat 3. Contact us at urbamond.org.